so this is what retention time uh, tells us about the solubility of the solute in the stationary and mobile phases now this graph can also be used for something else which is to calculate the percentage of comp uh, of composition of the of all these solutes in the solute mixture so we know that um, uh, the solute mixture uh, was composed of solute a b and c now let's say i want to calculate the percentage uh, the percentage of solute b in the entire solute mixture so what we will do is we will calculate the area under this peak and we will divide it by the areas of all three peaks so for example this area is x the area under the peak this area is y the area under the peak and this area is z so if i want to calculate the percentage composition of b in the solute mixture it will be y over x plus y plus z multiplied by 100 because it's a percentage so multiplied by 100 so this tells me the the percentage not only that b was present in the solute mixture but also the what percentage of b was present in the solute mixture so that's why hplc or high performance liquid chromatography is a very very advanced technique now the last type of chromatography that we have to do is gas liquid chromatography now in gas liquid chromatography as the name suggests we usually use it to separate gaseous mixtures so uh, we have we have a mobile phase which is called a carrier gas the carrier gas is called the mobile phase because what what it does is that it moves through this entire column and it carries the gaseous mixture with it and the stationary phase is a very polar volatile uh, non volatile liquid so uh, okay, the carrier gas i have mentioned in the next slide but an example of a carrier gas is h2 because the carrier gas should be very inert and very non polar and the stationary phase should, uh, the carrier gas is the mobile phase and the stationary phase which is present inside the column has to be a non volatile liquid because obviously it cannot be gaseous and it has to be polar at the same time so it has to be a non volatile liquid and it it has to be polar so from this uh, so we can have either a sample of volatile liquids because obviously they will be heated in the oven and eventually become gases or we can already have a mixture of gases so it can either be a mixture of volatile liquids or it can be a mixture of gases so whenever we have a mixture of volatile liquids or gases we can use gas liquid chromatography to separate them and we get similar retention time graphs for uh, as in hplc so the rules of retention time graphs all apply to this one as well now let's go to this uh, the chem chemistry behind glc so the stationary phase as i said is a polar non volatile liquid and the mobile phase is an uh, inert carrier gas typically h2 or helium so either hydrogen or helium because both of them are very inert the solute mixture is a mixture of gases or volatile liquids as i've told you and the rules of partitioning apply so now we know that glc hplc and paper chromatography are uh, use the rules of partitioning and thin layer chromatography uses the rules of adsorption so now you can easily differentiate between them so actually glc and uh, glc is used in conjunction with mass spectrometry to detect the exact identity of the solute we have done mass spectrometry uh, i have uploaded a playlist on it so you can go and watch it if you're not aware about what mass uh, mass spectrometry is uh, but uh, we don't have to know how they are used in conjunction but uh, it's good to know that uh, we we can use two analytical techniques together to identify exactly what a compound is in a mixture and uh, we and we use these techniques like hplc glc in forensics uh, to uh, athletes are checked if they have taken drugs before uh, sports events uh, using glc and hplc and it's it's a they are, these are very sophisticated analytical techniques used uh, in modern times so now um, we have done retention time as i said uh, you, this is a typical retention time graph for a mixture of solutes a b c and d they are sep the the mixture is separated into separated into the individual solutes and as i said 
the area under curve upon the sum of all the areas gives the percentage composition.